In this tutorial, I'll show you how to generate images using the power of AI with DALL-E. This image generator is super easy to use. Simply enter a text prompt and you'll be presented with several variations of the image. This is a new technology, so let me walk you through everything so you can get up to speed. First, you'll need to sign up for an account, which is free. Your account stores your generated images. You need not provide any payment information unless you want to purchase credits. While DALL-E is free, that's only for a certain number of images. If you expend all of your credits, you'll need to wait a month or purchase more. Considering the price of stock art, I'd say the price of credits is quite reasonable. As of this video, they are about 10 cents each, and you will get a series of four images per credit. I have purchased some credits, so I'll have plenty to work with. I've nearly burned through a thousand credits just messing around and generating images for my YouTube videos, so if you don't want to pay for this each month, I'd be very careful about carelessly spending your free credits. Sometimes you get lucky and you get the perfect image, but a lot of the time the results are duds and you'll have to refine the text prompt several times. You may even reach a dead end with nothing to show for it, so expect to spend about three to five credits to get a usable image. Let's use some of our free credits to generate an image. All you need to do is describe an image you'd like to see. Try to be descriptive, but succinct, and consider the scope of what can be generated. Obviously, graphic violence, pornography, and other types of moderated images are not going to be able to be generated. Rather than waste a credit, Dolly will let you know it will not generate such an image. You'll have to be less vulgar and try again. Copyrighted images are also off limits. If you search for an anteater drinking a Pepsi through a straw, you won't get a Pepsi logo, but you should get a generic red and blue can. I actually want the anteater to use its tongue like a straw, so I may have to modify the prompt a bit. Interestingly enough, if you ask for an anteater snorting Coke, that's not forbidden, but it does give me a better result. As you can see, you may have to think outside the box a little bit to get the image you want. When I entered the prompt, I also added digital art at the end. Descriptors like this can help guide Dali in the direction you want. Without specifying you want art, Dali will often generate photos, so it will save you credits if you're at least specific about the style of image you want. There are many popular art styles and genres to choose from, some based on artists who are in the public domain. For example, you can search for art in the style of Van Gogh. Even Salvador Dali's style can be harnessed for your images. I have an opinion on using other artists' styles, but that's a topic for a separate video. You can modify the results with Impressionist, Watercolor, Child's Drawing, Single Line, and lots of other interesting genres. You can also specify colors, lighting, environments, backgrounds, and other properties for your image. Dali will even give you hints here and there about how to be more descriptive with your prompts, and you can also consult their documentation. One thing to point out is that most of the time, these images will have mistakes. Photographs are especially prone to this with misshapen hands, faces, and other details. Sometimes this can be fixed, but some images are just going to look funky no matter what. We are still a few more years off from generating images that look flawless. Once you generate a series of images, they will be saved in your Dolly account. If you want to download the image to your computer, there is a button for that. You can also share images publicly or privately. I would recommend downloading any images you want to keep as a backup. By default, the image will include the date and the text prompt. The file format is PNG. If you happen to stumble upon the perfect image, that's great. But in many cases, you'll get an image that is close, but could be better. You can submit the text prompt again, or you can select the closest match and have Dolly take another crack at it using the variations button. This will cost you another credit, but you'll get another four iterations based on the original image. If the image does not get closer to your vision, you can try again, but as I mentioned earlier, some prompts are just a dead end. I wouldn't waste too many credits trying to develop an idea that is outside the capabilities of Dali. This image in particular seems to want to always be cropped too small to capture the whole scene. There are ways to expand these images, but we'll come back to that later. As you begin to generate images, you will build up a history. This is the collection of every image you've generated using Dali. This can get large rather quickly, so there is a way to manage it, which we will come back to. The history page shows the images listed chronologically. It's worth looking through here periodically in case you missed an image. 
It's also good to revisit in case there is an image that didn't work for a past project, but may be relevant to the current one. Back on the prompt page, on the right there is an optional sidebar that shows your most recent generated images. You can clear this if you like. While I don't see a way to delete images you have generated, you can add everything but the rejects to collections. You can have one large collection of your favorites, or break it down into categories like I have done. It will take some time to sort all of your images, but it will be worth it to filter out the rejects to make it easier to locate the good images. I mentioned earlier that you can expand your images. You can do that using the outpainting feature. Open an image and then choose edit. In the editor, you can add to the edges of the image or erase and replace areas. When you do this, it will cost you a credit each time you click generate. There are instructions you can read that go into more detail about this process, but you need to give Dolly enough of the source image so that it does not drift away from the concept too much. So if I want to attempt to show more of the can, I will generate an area that encompasses both the can and some of the subject. That gives me a really wide can that is out of proportion. Let's try using the eraser to erase the part of the can that is incorrect and generate another frame over that. That gives me a much better result, so I'm happy with that. I could try to modify this more, but I risk ruining my progress and burning up credits. The most important thing to remember is that this editor does not save your progress. You'll have to manually download these images or you'll lose them. It is also possible to upload images to merge them together in various ways. You could generate other objects or characters and splice them into this scene. Or if you go back to your history, you'll see that each time you edit an image, you generate four iterations of each area. So I could splice in this better looking cam. I'll download that image again, and next we'll need to crop off the excess space. While you can crop in lots of different applications, I'll do it in Photoshop CC 2023 so that I can also demonstrate a few other edits you may want to make. First I will use the object selection tool to select this weird turkey sloth thing, and with shift backspace I can remove it. I'll see if I can remove anything else that is left behind as well. To fill in the background, I'll duplicate the ground on the left and paste it beneath. Then move it over and scale it to fit. Next I'll use the clone stamp tool to remove the logo on the bottom, and then use the spot healing brush to remove any hard edges and unwanted objects from the ground. I'll need to clean up the anteater a bit. First the claw needs to be filled in. The spot healing brush gets most of it done, but I'll need to smudge the pixels to finish it off. I'll smudge around a few other places that need it too. Then I will fill in the missing area in the top left by simply selecting an area of the background that can repeat horizontally and stretch it across. I'll use that same trick to fix the side of the can. Next I'll zoom in and remove some of the glitches and blemishes using the spot healing brush. Then I will try to even out the ground by making it more uniform. And I'll crop off anything that I don't want to keep. I'll correct a few mistakes like the nails and add a highlight to the eye. I also want to select the can, copy it, remove it, then paste it in place and move it closer to the foreground while correcting the proportions. I'll clean up the edges of the can and remove the shadow from the background. Then I'll need to manually add the shadow back in to the correct location using a layer. A few more finishing touches to fix the snout, and I'd say this is looking much better. That's relative because this is still pretty sloppy as far as art is concerned. Although abstract, there are some things that just don't look right about it. I'm certain this is not anatomically correct, and the can needs to be more cylindrical on the bottom. I could probably spend a lot more time refining this by painting over it, but I will stop because this is just an example. Now to answer a question I bet you have been pondering from the beginning. How can you use these generated images? Legally speaking, the terms of service state that these images are public domain because multiple users may be able to generate similar results from a prompt. You may not misrepresent that these images were made entirely by a human, but otherwise they are free to use commercially or otherwise. As far as using these images practically, I wouldn't use them as is for commercial use because of the flaws and the fact that anyone else can make a similar image. For personal use, you do what you will. In my opinion, you would want to at least clean up these images in Photoshop to fix the mistakes, and perhaps elaborate more on the idea to complete it. These generated images are just rough concepts, not finished products. You can also use generated images as a reference or inspiration to make handmade artwork. 
The result would be something that is based on the generated image, but stands on its own as a unique piece of art. For more about using AI-generated art commercially, check out my other videos on this subject. There you go, that was a tutorial about how to use DALL-E to generate AI art. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out some of my other videos about AI art. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.